so the CBA expired, like I said, at 11.59 on the 1st of this mm-hmm. month. So going into the 2nd, uh, we we no longer had a collective bargaining agreement in Major League Baseball as of 12.01, I believe it was. Um, For the first the time in 27 years. At a work stoppage, the owners locked out the players. Um, Rob Manfred, I think it was at 12.02, released a letter to the fans. And... Mm-hmm. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will put a link down in the description for you. Basically, what it was, was he came out hot against the players. Tried to paint them as the enemy in this, um, saying that their inability to bring negotiable points to the table and negotiate with the owners is the reason this happened. Basically saying, this is their fault. The reason we locked them out is because it's their fault. It's like, well, no. I mean, I'm not a big Tony Clark fan myself. But at the same time, like the owners, like Rob Manfred isn't the best negotiator either. We saw that happen no. last summer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we did. <laughs> we all know how that went. 60 games. Well, and, the, and, you know, going back to that, though, like I think we saw the mess that that was last summer. Like Brig and I have been doomsday in this, like I said, for almost – for like two and a half. Oh years yeah, now. we we all know this was coming, especially since COVID. We all knew this was. Yeah, and and last last summer, watching all this, all the negotiating, quote unquote, going on, and then finally when they did reach an agreement, and Rob Manfred said sixty games was always the number. It's like, excuse me, that reeks of not negotiating in good faith to me. Oh yeah, like, that's a terrible move and terrible thing for him to come out and say because a the players should have filed a grievance against that and maybe sued oh, yeah. them. And B, it's like, then why didn't you pitch 60 games to begin with? Yeah. No, like, why even try to do a half a season, start after the all-star break or yeah, anything like that? You know, it was, I don't know, it was all, it was bad from the beginning. It was. Yeah. And, and that inability to negotiate plus Tony Clark's inability to budge and compromise yeah. is what's got us in this mess right now. Yeah. Like, it's really frustrating and... I don't want, like I said, I don't want to be like a doomsdayer about this, but I'm holding off on buying my spring training tickets at this point. That's for sure. Me and too. I and I was, I was wanting to plan to, <laughs> I want to plan a trip. I know. I know. I, I want to take down my and kids. Host you. And I want to, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, but, um, but these are, there are some main issues, like some main talking points that have oh, yeah. led to this point. Like, Joel, you've talked about the salary floor and the salary cap. Is, yeah is typically like there typically can't be a floor without a cap. Um, but you said that you were reading places that they were talking floor with no cap. Is that yep, right? So this is, so I'm actually, yep. So I'm posting something on Thursday on the blog, um, actually hitting five key points of CBA negotiations and salary cap floor is one of them. So the, one of the best things about baseball is that we don't have a salary cap, which is great. We have the luxury tax instead the luxury tax hasn't been raised since 2012, so it's about 15 to 18 percent off to where it should be mm-hmm. going into this season with proper inflation and proper like just raises over t- the course of time, which the owners have basically each saved 100 million dollars over time because of it. Wow. Um, yeah, they saved a lot of money because of it. Uh, but no, the floor. Essentially, what I think happened is that there's a floor, but there's no cap and the luxury tax gets raised. No, so yeah. The, and I saw that was, that was something that I think the owners proposed. Yes. The owners just proposed it. The owners are all for a floor. And the, the players are, are too. The players want a floor too, because that means yep. the teams are having to pay guys. Exactly. But I think it means, and it also gives them what they want. It also gives the players what they want in this too, by paying younger guys sooner. Because they'll have to, they'll have to do more in-house extensions. You'll have to see, like for the Mariners, for example, you'll have to see like a Jared Kalanick, a Cal Raleigh, a Logan Gilbert, you know, Mm -hmm. guys who they actually want to pay and keep. And they can, they can put seven of those contracts together and, you know, still have a lot of money to spend elsewhere to meet the floor. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is one of the things, too, is that, like, I used to, like, Brig and I have been beating the drum mercilessly about, like, baseball needs a salary cap. Baseball needs a salary cap. It'll help with competition. And over the last, like, month, I've been like, no, a salary cap is not the issue. Is not the salary cap is not the The solution is a salary floor. Yep. And, And the thing is, like, I understand why the owners would want 
a salary cap and would want a luxury tax and it's to protect them from themselves. But to be yeah. completely honest, like you don't get that rich being an idiot. And I no. feel like they should, they would understand that the market is what they said it, said it as like these players can go out and ask for $500 million, but if nobody's willing to pay them, they've got to come down. They exactly. Go, and then they can come back and ask for $400 million. But if, again, if nobody's willing to pay them, they've got to come back again with a new number. And the fact yep. that like Artie Moreno goes out there and gives Mike Trout, who is the most deserving of all the money in the world, by the way, as far as baseball oh, yeah. goes, $450 uh, million. Dollars, and then, but then you've got guys coming out like in the next couple of years, and they're like, "Well, I want four hundred fifty million dollars." Like, no, you're not worth four hundred fifty. You're not Mike Trout. Exactly. And the but the problem is, is that there's somebody like Jack Zarenzik who's going to be like, "What does what does Robbie Cano want? He wants three hundred twenty. What three twenty five? Deal. Is there anybody else bidding for Robinson Cano? No. no. Well, let's give no. him that money anyway. Like that's exactly. the problem that baseball has, is that. There's no set max contract. There's no set maximum amount of years. I feel like they're like they're addressing the issues of competition and like paying their players, but they're going about it in the wrong way. The NBA yeah. to me has it figured out with their max. So the NBA one hundred percent does. They they like, have it set out for like position, for like your talent, your skill well, level. It's, it's it's a max number of years, a max dollar amount. And Rob Manfred specifically addressed. Players hitting free agency earlier does not help the market because those players can leave. I understand that. That's an issue they had in the NBA. How did they solve it? Bird rights. Um, they solved it by offering an extra year that the, that the home team can offer an extra year on their contracts. Yeah, like they can match. Things... They can match. You can yes, match that there contract. Are things that you can build into the contract to incentivize players to stay because that what those guys want is they want extra years. They want extra guaranteed money. So if you can give them one more year with the same – um, annual a- average value. Yep. Like, and a lot of guys do want to, And a lot of guys do want to stay home. I mean, yeah. they're there for six years anyway. <laughs> yes. They're established. They have kids in school, a family. Mm-hmm. Like they're in their parts of their community. A yep. lot of these guys don't want to leave. Like, look at Matt Chapman for instant of the A's. Mm-hmm. He's if there was a floor, the A's would no doubt it. he would be their first extension. He would oh, go down tomorrow. as a lifelong A. He would go down as a lifelong A and one of the greatest out Oakland Athletics of all time. Yeah, certainly. And and I feel like they baseball needs to take a page out of the NBA's book and they need to incorporate something along the lines of bird rights, which means mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know what bird rights are, that is a player who plays through his rookie contract and re-signs with his original team. He has he gets what an extra year. I oh, believe it's team, an extra year. The team basically gets uh a year of his contract not counted against the cap. Yeah. I believe is what it is. So yeah. there's so there's no repercussions for the team for giving him a whole bunch of money. But then no. also and I think is... it's that first year of that new contract too. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that transition. It just gets and, like spread and the out. Fact over that time. Baseball doesn't have a salary cap, like just don't count it against the luxury tax luxury tax threshold. Because yeah. te- like teams are teaching or treating it like a salary cap, which is kind of the idea it's yeah. not a hard cap you yeah know, but there is a there is a penalty it, along the lines of what you would get penalized if you're uh if you're not staying within a a, a salary cap like it's a sneaky yeah. salary cap is what it is it is it is exactly and only two teams in 2021 went over the salary cap the dodgers and the padres mm-hmm. we saw how that ended for one team and how it went for the other team um it doesn't always work it doesn't it not no. work it doesn't, and doesn't that's the thing the that's funny is that that baseball is the one sport that's out without a salary cap, and you're seeing more teams win a World Series, win the net, win the title, than there are in any other sport in the last 20 years. Oh yeah, different teams. The problem that they have though is that there are teams that aren't spending and they're not competitive. Like mm-hmm. the A's can only get to the playoffs. They they can they will not bring in the impact player to take them over the top to win the World nope. Series. Um, the Rays can get to the World Series but they will not pay that impact flair to get them over the top to win the World oh, Series. They, they did. They just did. They just did. Yes, finally. <laughs> finally. They yeah. paid him. No, but is he going to be – I mean, are the Rays going to make the World Series next year? Is, is he going to be around? You know, is it going to be three years by the time they make, make it to yeah. the World Series again or in that time? Are they going to have traded him? Because they did to Blake it. Snell. 
That's true. They didn't. They never extended Blake. Well, they did extend Blake Snell. Yeah, and they trade, and then they traded his contract to That's San Diego. True. But no one wants a ten-year contract, so. No, nobody does except, want ten years. Except for the that. Mets. The Mets wanted Cano. And the Mets too. Yeah. <laughs> well, but the, at that point, there was six years left on it. What five or six years left on it? Yeah. Maybe a little less than that. Yeah, and, and I it, think he's still on the books and could play in twenty twenty two. Yeah, as long as he doesn't test positive again. <laughs> no, nope. he's been raking in the D- DR. <laughs> I'm sure he has been. The dude can yeah. hit. The oh, dude yeah, can he, play baseball like flat yeah, out. Yeah, if there's a DH in the NL, I absolutely think the Mets are like, oh yeah, Robbie, they got their guy. <laughs> Robbie, <laughs> here you go. Here's a job for you. Hit the ball. Don't do PEDs. And we will pay somebody to follow you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and monitor everything that goes into your body because we have to have your bat. Dude, Steve Cohen will probably do it himself at that point. I would. <laughs> I'd shower with the dude if that's what it took, man. <laughs> Robbie. <laughs> Robbie. What is that? It is a Chips Ahoy cookie. Lay off me. Uh. No, give it. Give me the cookie, Robbie. <laughs> But no, so we talked salary cap floor, free agency time and arbitration. We we talked on the, about that a little bit. That players want to be want to become free agents earlier, which makes sense because six years is a long time. Yeah, well, there's also a part of this as well when it comes to arbitration. The mm-hmm. players also want arbitration after two years of service. Right, and I understand that. Which, of course, you know, if Kalanick you know, breaks out after year one and year two. Randy Rosarena, another guy mm-hmm. who was broken out after two years, you know, or. Well, he was know, technically I, still a rookie this year. Exa- well, exactly. Technicality. <laughs> another one of those things that's broken, but like they want, they just want arbitration after two seasons. That's the biggest mm-hmm. thing the players want. They want, you know, six years of service down to five years of service and 29 and a half years of age, whichever comes first, five or 29 which helps mm-hmm. those late bloomers. Like not every yeah. baseball player is a Mike Trout, Bryce Harper kind of guy. Some right. Not everybody's like going to get called up Crawford. for 2021. Like um, Jonathan Indio is 24 and won the rookie of the year this year for yeah. the Reds. Alec, Alec Bohm, uh Jake Cronenworth, both in their mm-hmm. mid twenties. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so I totally understand that, that they want, they want to become free agents earlier because they, and this is the other thing with that is that the average amount of service time has gone down by almost a year and a half compared yeah. to what it was even just like six years ago. That's a big deal. And so these guys saying like, we want to get paid sooner because our careers are shorter. Analytics are saying that you should not pay us in our mid thirties, in our early to mid thirties, because there's a guy nine years younger who's going to contribute oh, to the team more and for long. 100%. Yeah, no, exactly. And, Part of that's also the minor league system in baseball is completely broken too. It's right. great because there's a long, it's long, it's way too long. Mm-hmm. Julio Rodriguez for but but the does thing not is though to go to Double A at the beginning of this last season. No, he, he should doesn't. have been in Triple A. I've always beginning. argued though that the that the long minor league system makes for a better product at the top. But not which, every not every guy needs it, but every guy has to go through it, which is. I know because it's well. I mean, most guys. I mean, Ryan Zimmerman didn't go through the minors at all. He started opening day the year after he was drafted. So. That's true. I mean, but, but like that's some guys, very Billy rare. Bean, Billy Bean needed it. Right. Yeah, and there are, and you know some guys are in the minor leagues just as sparring partners, as Brig has put it. Yeah, they're only there to fill out a roster. Yeah, and those guys know who they are. They're aware. Yeah, they do, and they're they're happy with it because they're at that at that point in their career, they're like, I'm just living the dream. I love what I'm doing. I'm playing know, triple A baseball. Play baseball. And it, it's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but those are kind of, I guess, your highlights for the for the CBA. Some of the hot topics, uh, competitive yeah. balance. We 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 touched on that. Uh, you know that money and free agency are going to play big roles in what they decide with competitive balance, things like that. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye on it. If there is anything, any update at all by next week, we're going to talk about it uh, because this is a, a really important issue because the longer this drags out, the less likely we are to, is to have spring training in February. And I or think quality that quality spring training even or a quality beginning of the season, because one thing mm-hmm. that no one's really talking about is how this affects guys who are injured right now. No one's That's talking about next. like, think about, think about Ken Giles on the Mariners mm-hmm. rehabbing. Doesn't rehab loses two months of progress on his rehab. 
Yeah, because they can't work with the team trainers right now. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. So there are probably we're probably going to see another year with a ton of injuries, just like we did after the COVID season because nobody could yep. go to the facility and work out. They go to play that sixty game season and they ramp up with the same amount of time off and they start yep. spring training, go into the year. So I think honestly, I think the players are going to find a way, are going to have to find a way to compromise on this because the owners are stuck. Their heels are dug in deep. Yeah, I think it's I think it's two ways on like a both a lot of things. There's there's like some mutual ground. Like the owners already said, we'll do a we'll do a universal DH. Uh huh. The Which helps owners a lot of guys. said exactly. The owners have said we'll do a salary floor. The owners have said we'll do expanded playoffs. The PA will have to budge on expanded playoffs, which ultimately helps everyone. Which is so because, weird that they're like, no, we don't want fourteen. We want twelve. Like, like TV money, TV. Look how great it's doing for the NFL. Well, this is the thing, though, is that the, all the money from the playoffs goes to the teams, but you're in, you're you're going to get your playoff, like you're going to get your playoff shares. You, like that's the thing is, I, actually, it's it's not the TV money. It's it's the gate. The team gets the entire gate during the playoffs, and I think the TV money is split among the players. It's like, but you get your playoff share, and and there's more of you to play more meaningful games throughout the course of the season like he like he said before that there are going to be more meaningful games played in april may june even by teams that didn't think that they had a chance going into the season that now they're going to feel like they have more of a chance they're going to be more competitive they're going to try to win those games going into the early part of the season and it's going to make a, a major impact on attitudes of those small market teams that really struggle like the Orioles like if I was an Orioles fan I'd be ecstatic as a Mariners fan I'm already looking forward to next year but even more so like there might be teams below the Mariners in the playoffs with an expanded playoff oh yeah so. no I agree I think it's I think it's great for all of baseball to for an expanded playoffs because I mean it's one of those things where the MLB needs to take a page out of the NBA's book for some stuff they need mm -hmm. to take a page out of the NFL's book for this one because it is mm -hmm. working for the NFL right now. It Big is time. absolutely working. Like how many more teams are like competitive right now? Mm -hmm. Like the whole, like half the AFC is competitive. Half the NFC is competitive. It's like, it's, it's great to watch football. Well, our Seahawks were what? Three and we were tied for 15th, three and seven. At, and it was like, we're like two bounces and two weeks away from still being in the hunt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, exactly. And it's week fourteen and there's an extra week. So it's yeah. like <laughs> like now, not so much at four what four and eight, I think. But there's uh, a chance. We but did make a it slight seven chance. to nine one year. We did make it at seven to nine. We, one year. It's true. It's true. But I don't know. I feel like as a baseball fan, like I don't understand why there's so much pushback, especially by fans with expanded playoffs, because people are worried about it watering it down. It's like, no, you we want more playoff baseball. We no, want more meaningful games. Like, and we the, saw and it work last and work in it 2020 did, with the short schedules. Work. Yeah. Like the short, then, like, it was like, boom, 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 boom. It was so much fun. And the thing that kills me, too, is like, it's like, are the people who are against expanded playoffs, are they fans of the Yankees, the Dodgers, oh, yeah. the Cardinals? Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> the yeah. Red Sox? Because yeah. they're worried that a team like the Mariners, the Rays, um, the White Sox, the Giants, the Padres that are going to come in and knock their teams out and not give them a chance to win a World 100%. Series? Is that really what you're worried about? 100%. As large or are you worried about teams, quality of playoff? It's the large market owners that are like, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. And the fans of those large market teams, I feel like, too. 